certain amount of capacity for aggression. And then there's an, there's an interesting twist here too. I don't know, I read a book a while back called uh, Billion Wicked Thoughts. It's a very, very interesting book. Um, it was written by Google engineers. And one of the things they did was analyze pornography use between men and women and, on, and, and with billions of searches, literally. And they found, which is not surprising, that um, men preferred visual pornography, but females preferred um, literary pornography. And they found the classic literary pornography uh, plot, which was something like, um, you know, relatively innocent, but undervalued and attractive, but not so obviously attractive young woman stumbles across this sort of commanding man who has many women at his disposal. And over time, despite his relatively high levels of aggression, he finds himself attracted to this woman and then forms a sexual relationship with her. It's a beauty and the beast plot, essentially. But one of the things that's so interesting about their analysis was they, they listed the top five occupations or characters for female sexual uh, literature. And they were pirate, surgeon, billionaire, vampire, and pilot. And so those are all males who I would say are marked by, oh no, not pilot, werewolf. Werewolf was the fifth one. And so I think it reflects to some degree this conundrum that women have. It's because women have to pick a man who has the capacity for aggression, enough of the capacity for aggression to protect himself and others and to move out into the world against a fair bit of opposition, but who's also simultaneously empathic or perhaps conscientious enough to, to be caring and share. And you can imagine that's a real knife edge, right? Because you need a bit of a monster in your man, let's say, to keep the real monsters away, but you don't want so much monster so that a relationship is impossible. And so 